Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Too Weird Didn't Watch. My foot was touching Brantley's foot right yep. then, and that was super weird. I was He's wearing a shoe, up. though. I'm Robert Berg. Robert Berg? I, but just go with the theme song. We watch movies, and then we talk about <laughs> them, and we don't really watch them. Yeah. <laughs> theme song, what do you want from me? I would say your name. Brantley, that's not a theme song at all. Uh, My name is Brantley. I'm talking with Al. About the movies we haven't watched. Because they're way too weird. So we make fun of them. But maybe we watch them a later. Yeah. <laughs> Start. Read a thing. Battle Beyond the Stars. Woo! So this Moving is. Moving on? <laughs> This is for Brantley, who did not what pitched me the idea of Magnificent Seven in Space. This is Magnificent Seven in Space. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I know that it's a thing. Shad, a young farmer, assembles a band of diverse mercenaries in outer space to Please. defend his peaceful planet from the evil tyrant Sador and his armada of aggressors. How come there's never like any just chill tyrants? We're like, oh man, that tyrant, he's the best. Those aren't tyrants then. Well, then why do we have to be told he's an evil tyrant? Because they could just be kind of, you know, dicks. But no, he's evil. Okay. He's a sadist. He enjoys it. Other people could be just, you know, they blow up a, a town, but let's just get to the, like the minerals underneath. <laughs> They're like the, uh, the guy from uh, Avatar, the dumb leader of the place. that's just like, we want the thing on Obtanium. We need it. They have yeah. unobtainium and avatar? Yes, that's the... Oh, that avatar. Okay. Not the last airbender. <laughs> yes. Which is why they dropped the title from the movie. <sighs> that movie. Moving on. <laughs> Among the mercenaries. What was this, the tyrant's name again? Sador. 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 I'm, now I'm, I just want to call him Sadder. S-A-D-O-R? Yeah, because he's a sadist. Yeah, but if he was sad, that's even better. <laughs> Sador. <laughs> He's evil, but he's sad about it. <laughs> like, mm, I, I, I just keep being evil. I guess I'll blow up this planet. What's the point? <laughs> They've got all these minerals and stuff, and I'm ending and human stuff. lives, but really, what does it matter in the end? <laughs> We're all just dust in the wind. The non existent space wind. wind. There's not even wind in space. It's sir, a just solar take your wind. Sir, just take your Vicodin. <laughs> Kill him. <laughs> Among the mercenaries are Space Cowboy. <laughs> and that's his name. He capital really liked, space, he really liked the name. Cowboy. He really liked the song. Is there a song called Space Cowboy? Yes. I didn't know that. That's why there's a movie called that. I thought that was just because Clint Eastwood wanted to get a bunch of his old friends together and fix the space shuttle. Probably, but, you know, that's where the name came from. Okay. Also because Clint Eastwood. Anyway, who else is there? No, I'm just excited. I want to talk about the parents who named their son Space Cowboy. We don't know they named like that. Like Mr. He... and Mrs. Cowboy, like sitting down, like John Cowboy, Alan Cowboy, Earth Cowboy. No, wait. Mars Cowboy. Up, up. Just cover it all. Space. Space Cowboy. Space to his friends. I mean, he could have changed his name. Maybe he's a really big fan of Westerns, but he and lives space. in space. <laughs> well, no, because, it, okay. Space Cowboy is a space-going truck driver from Earth. Does his truck go in space, or does he just, like, drive a truck on Earth and then go to space sometimes? Or... So it's like a flying car, but it's a, tr a semi? Mm-hmm. It's like like the Winnebago from, uh... What's that movie? The spoof movie. Spaceballs. Spaceballs, thank you. I'm very sorry. Flip my mind for a second. But, like, a whole truck? Yeah. I, I like that idea the best. Yeah. That probably is what it is, too. I'm picturing it's literally just like a semi, but with like wings glued to the side of it in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's got the booster rockets on the trailer. I really, this reminds me of the that fan drawing of the Millennium Falcon I've seen where they like show the forks fitting into these uh, long uh, cargo container things. And mm -hmm. the idea is the Millennium Falcon is actually sort of a tugboat. Like it pushes the stuff around. Hmm. I always thought that that was what it was for, or at least that you were supposed to, like, it was almost like a forklift, like it would pick things up between the tongs, but I've never seen that in any of the movies. It kind of bums me out. I want to see that happen. I assume that was just, like, an external storage that's space between. Okay, yeah. 
because the Millennium Falcon is actually fairly big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just you never see any of the space in there really. You see that one hallway where they chill, and then the uh, driving thing, and then the newer movie you see that little a little bit of the like cargo space, but they never go because it's supposed to. It's a cargo shipping freighter, right? Well, that's the thing. I think you see most of the inside of it in the movie, but a lot of it is engine, and a lot of like I think the idea is that most of the time you're not going to be shipping things inside of it. You're actually mm. going to be shipping like big stuff that you're pushing around. You just never see it in that capacity in the movies. Yeah. Anyway, moving on <laughs> from space cowboy. Um, there's also guilt, a wealthy, but experienced assassin looking for a place to hide. Okay. A- and St. X-Men. Not X-Men, X-Men, E-X-M-I-N. Not gonna lie, I pictured Wolverine dressed like a like the Pope, oh. like the Pope. We're going back to the hot Halo theme song again. Second episode in a row. <laughs> have you been playing Halo lately? I have not. That's no. the thing. I have not played Halo recently. The, the most recent game I played was actually it was you can't or can't drive this, which is a like an indie game from uh, Pixel Maniacs. Okay, I got a free copy to review. It's pretty Ooh. awesome. Um, check that out on the Himineko's YouTube channel. Or cross promotion there. Shameless plug. I I, I don't have any shame. Um, and Saint X-Men is a Valkyrie warrior looking to prove herself in battle. So it's X-23. Oh, I like that characters. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. They just go and they fight Sat- Sador. Space Cowboy. This is what? Four people? The, the other three don't matter. All right. <laughs> the robots. Yeah, have you ever seen Se- no, no, I mean, Seven? I mean, There's always the characters just like, all right, he's the Indian. No, that, that's fine. This that's guy's fine. the Mexican. That's, that's fine. Let's talk about Chris Pratt. But and- in that one, it's... A town, right? Right, yeah. And then in the original Seven Samurai, it was, again, just a town. This is a whole plan. You're going to need more than four people to take care of this problem. In You're fact, this really is more... Than- good at taking care of problems, I guess. You know what else is pretty good? Luke Skywalker. Guess what he didn't do? He didn't stop the Empire. Okay. They're in space. Right? Yeah. They have space things. What if this is a Voltron situation? And now form the head. <laughs> Space Cowboy forms the head. It's got the hat. It's got a hat on the robot head. <laughs> uh, like the the Saint uh what's her face X-Men, she's got like the like the claws and also she forms an arm like and a it's rosary just... beads. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is what what are the rest of their names? Uh yeah, Gelt forms oh, the Gelt. legs and the other guy forms the other arm. Yeah, Gelt is like he's wealthy so they're just like Gold. They're, they're like gold and there's like legs. Like rubies for the kneecaps. But the, the kneecaps pop down and they have guns hidden inside yeah. because he's an assassin. Yeah. He assassinates people with his gun legs. They're all spaceships that are like <laughs> really, really themed. Because they transform it's basically a uh, Megazord from Power Rangers. Yeah, okay. So like Cowboys is shaped like a horse, kind right? of. Like yeah. how Firefly uh, or the uh, Serenity ship and Firefly is based on a Firefly. Okay. And then uh Saint X Men is just a flying cross. I'm down with that. Yeah. Okay, but it's like the fancy like rosary cross. In the in the in in the uh, the Voltron thing, I was thinking about. I was wondering like, what if Gelt just forms like a giant gold gun? <laughs> <laughs> he is the the sound not sound wave. Oh yeah, it is sound wave, right? Who does the gun? Oh no, Megatron becomes the yeah. gun and Soundwaves wields him in the original Mega Force. Star- Starscream wields him, which is just weird. Why would you let him hold you? I don't know. I don't know. Our next movie is Miami Golem. Okay. A professor and his crew of scientists make an interesting discovery when they attempt to revive the cell of an unknown creature. Did, did the Golem didn't have cells? Well, it's just the one cell. Maybe that's maybe this is ancillary to the golem, or maybe they don't actually know what a golem is in this movie. Okay. <laughs> Little do they know, their experiment has sparked life. Wait, what do you mean? Little do they know? <laughs> they were attempting to revive the cell of an unknown creature. They're literally <laughs> sitting there like, "Can we get some spark of life in this?" They please? succeeded without knowing. <laughs> they're really incompetent. Like, they're idiot savants. They're really good at science, but they're not really fully aware how good they are. Who even brought this cell? Like, it says the cell, like a single cell. Like, somebody comes in with, like, a little, like, a test tube, and he's like, inside of this test tube is one cell. It's going to be hard to find. It's floating in solution. Right, yeah. 
And they're like, oh, we will revive it. Unless he has like a slide with it on there, yeah. Also, it doesn't like it's an un- it doesn't say that it's like the creature. And in, in my mind, they're just like, here's the cell. What's what's it from? I don't know. Like it's not like Bigfoot or something. It's just they don't they didn't keep track of what creature they got. Are they the cell forensic from? scientists? They're like, huh? What is this? It's dead. We can't figure it out. What if we revived it? What if we breathed into it the spark of life, but unknowingly? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Little they know their experiment has sparked life. And unlock the awesome and destructive power of an uncontrollable interdimensional alien force. What? From the cell? Yeah. So there's two options here. One's more fun, or they're both equally fun, but for very different reasons. Right, okay. Option one, it is it, it just like triggering that brain its life. It like opens a portal and like basically Cthulhu comes through. Like that was the one thing. Like he left that one cell on Earth. Is like <laughs> he sleeps within the cell. <laughs> like little baby, like Cthulhu like, space monkeys, or uh, what do you call them? Uh, not water babies. What water do they bears? call them? Well, they're water bears. They could be a tardigrade. Like C- Cthulhu is a tardigrade, essentially. He's this like he's basically a uh, organelle inside the cell. <laughs> right, and then he just busts out. He's like, oh, I've gotten. I am back. You released him. It's like he was sleeping there and that's him being quote unquote dead because he's not alive because he's not a full cell. Right, right. So he's there and then you just woke him up. So thanks, guys. Or this unstoppable monster is the cell itself. He's got like a giant amoeba walking around. No, no, no. It's still cell sized. <laughs> but it's like bouncing to people and they die and they're just like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it's warping time and space as it shoots around. the. It like bounces around like flubber. <laughs> but it's invisible because it's a cell, it's so you just, you just hear it hitting the walls. And it's like, what's going on? And then people die. I like that's my favorite version of that. <laughs> that's why I saved that one. That's amazing. Okay, okay. A TV reporter tries to find reason the reasons for the strange activity that engulfs the discovery, but he can't see the cell. Yeah, exactly. So it's bouncing like, around at quantum speed. He's can't like everything. coming in there with his microphone. Excuse me. Do you know the reason for it? You've fallen down dead for some reason. <laughs> I will interview someone else. <laughs> um, but when the professor and his staff are killed by a gang, <laughs> the answers become crucial as the alien continues to grow and utilizes its powerful psychic energies to control. Oh, and so kill. for everyone it kills, it splits because it's a cell and it grows. All right. Okay. And that gives us its psychic energy. No, it already has that. So he it's steals the psychic energy from the people that it yeah. kills. It's like sucking out their ectoplasm. And then the gang just kind of comes out of nowhere, though. Yeah, that's my, that's my favorite part about this. It's just like, well, we've got this unstoppable alien force that we've created. Meanwhile, a street gang. Yeah, they're just <laughs> like, this is like the most incompetent storytelling ever. Like, you're really engrossed in this alien thing. And they're like, oh, we're going to be attacked. And like, they finally get it in a box or whatever. And this street gang we've never seen before just does a home invasion style thing and comes in and be like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All right. Get the laptops, you guys. <laughs> they have any jewelry on them? All right, we're good. Peace. And just leaves and never saw it seen again. I mean, I get in like real life things happen from your perspective that just come out of nowhere. Doesn't work in a story though. The TV team is like, excuse me, sir. Could I interview about why you've, in- you've invaded this? <laughs> He's just there. They don't shoot him. <laughs> no. They like t- steal his camera so they don't get, you know, <laughs> on the news. But then they just, he's just like, I have been robbed. <laughs> He's still gonna, he's gonna the tape camera's still going as they're like going down the hill, like ladies and gentlemen. They don't know it's live, and he's like, saying. he's he's still talking to the microphone as they run away. He's like, the scene you are seeing is me being robbed. They are stealing my camera. The camera's signing driving off. away. Well, it looks like they're in some. We're at the maximum a- range now. Signing off. <laughs> <laughs> and those guys get arrested. And they're gone from the movie. Meanwhile, the alien, you know, Cthulhu cell is still bouncing free. Eventually, I think maybe they take control of the alien news reporter, and they they affect affect the Earth based on uh, the news that they that he reports. <laughs> it's a it's a very long term plan. It's like I will only report on stories about Donald Trump. <laughs> Secretly, this is why he's doing so well in the polls. Shots fired. <laughs> it does explain his hair though. He's the alien. Well, that's that. That was just how how does that low hanging fruit taste? Really delicious. Okay, okay. Um, I think we're gonna wrap it up here with a final movie. This is from Japan, by the way. 
Um, and from I actually looked up a little bit of information about it before we got, came on. We here. have not done many Japan movies. Have we done any? Uh, we we did that one that actually was lost to time. Oh. Uh, because of audio recording issues, guys. Uh, microphones are a thing. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But we may actually come back to that one. But this is, in Japan, the title was, well, no, I'm going to tell you what the U.S. title was, and mm-hmm. then I'll tell you the Japan. Uh, the U.S. title was The Human Vapor. The Japanese title was Gas Human Number One. The Japanese, as per usual, have the superior edge here on the title. One in Jap- Japanese is Ichi. That also means strawberry. <laughs> so I'm picturing this is like Strawberry Gas Man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No matter what goes on, no matter how much how important the number one is, it's always strawberry to me from this point on. Just so you know. A librarian is subject to a scientific experiment which goes wrong and transforms him into the human vapor. Strawberry flavored. Why? A librarian. Why is science so hard in movies? Why are librarians getting experimented on? Like, did he was he just going in for like, you know, people get like get paid for medical Maybe testing. Maybe he works at like the college library and there's like some guys doing his you know, it's for his uh degree. Thesis? I really like the idea more. I still I like the college idea, the college library thing. But I like the idea that he's just trying to pay his way through college. Mm-hmm. So in addition to working at the library, he's like I've got to go Oh, and he do volunteered some, for a Right, medical test. And they're like, "Well, here's this uh, you know, pain pill that we're testing to see if it stops pain." And he takes it and it like turns him into a vapor. And they're like, well, we have to put that on the side effects now. <laughs> May turn users into hu- human vapor in small percentage of cases. <laughs> in at least one case. <laughs> at least one case. This is number one, so. there's uh, that, That's a thing in, like, I think in the UK, if we're, for medical testing, like, if someone is taking the drug on, in the testing procedure and they, like, get hit by a bus... They have to put whatever their like cause of death was on like as a potential side effect. So you can have like aspirin, potential side effects, you know, like blood thinning, getting hit by a bus. <laughs> aspirin is dangerous in the UK. <laughs> uh, in California, everything's dangerous in California as well. Everything causes you cancer. It's there. Good thing we don't live in California. Yeah. Um, he uses his new ability to rob banks to fund the career okay. of his girlfriend, a beautiful dancer. So he's a vapor man. Right. Can he switch between those? Because if not, grabbing money is going to be kind of hard. Maybe he can touch things and turn them into vapor as well. Maybe it's like the... Um, who's the guy that the, the Hulk fights at the end of the Hulk movie? The Absorbing Man. The Absorbing Man, yes. That had so little set up. Like, nobody... Why didn't somebody just explain, like, hey, this guy absorbs stuff? Or... I don't know. Like, he just came out of nowhere. He's like, now I have absorbing powers. I mean, because they wouldn't use the absorbing man, but he's not his dad in the comics. So they just kind of threw those two characters together. I was fine with the idea of the character, but he had no setup. He's just like, after experimenting with this thing that turned my son into the Hulk, I can now absorb things. Now I can absorb things. That's because in the comics, Gamma does whatever. They just It's like the uh, X gene, where it just d- makes a superpower, and there's like gamma radiation. You think he it. was super bummed out about that? He's like, ah. Oh. I thought it was going to turn into a big green monster. I mean, watch this scene. He's just going to like, what? <laughs> the whole time. And the guy shows up and is like, I'll use this to murder. Because that's like Harry's personality in that movie. Yeah, I don't hate that movie. It's great version of uh, the Azor Man is from the uh, Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes. Okay. Where uh, it's, they don't set him up. He's just a character there because they do that with a lot of the characters. And the Hulk's fighting him. Right. And he's turned to steel and is like, you moron. I can absorb anything. Even rocks and Hulk just grins and goes Hulk smash rock and he beats him down until he's just a head <laughs> and then he throws that at the cops and leaves. I would think if you're the absorbing man, you absorb something like silly putty or something that the Hulk can't. I mean, he was like titanium and he he was doing fine. The Hulk couldn't break him. And then he's like, titanium doesn't work like that. Also, it, Hollywood guys, titanium, not magic metal radiation, not turn you into absorbing man or giant green monster. Fair enough. Moving forward with this person. <laughs> Comics movie. are dumb. I like them. The human vapor is ruthless in his quest for money. Man, he's ru- it's rough he out there for a college student. He has no roof. I mean, to be, f- you know, like he's got all the student loans and. Uh, it, he must have had loans because he made a quick jump from <laughs> library guy to bank robbing vapor man. Number one. 
<laughs> well, he was trying to fund the career of his girlfriend. A Does he right now? I'm number one on the wall when he leaves. Like he has the calling card. It's just the number one. And it's like, what does it mean? And he always has to carry that marker in with him. Like it's just floating in, his, in the middle of his vapor. <laughs> I can't I can't rob that bank. Why? Well, the openings to the vault aren't big enough for me to fit my Sharpie through. <laughs> I could totally go through the vents, but the Sharpie's a no-go. Right. He soon becomes Tokyo's most wanted criminal. Can he be stopped before he kills again? Vacuums. Yeah. Yeah, like, what I, are they going to do? Like, he's not super strong. I, it's, it's Ghostbuster, but easier. Just get a vacuum. Well, it's got to, you can't just, the vacuums pull the, the air in and then also, like, kick it out, too. Like, they, they suck in solid matter. So you would need sort of a, like, a literal vacuum, like a vacuum I mean, a vacuum you can tube. get the, um, because they have the ones for smoke. It's not really a vacuum, but, you know, it's kind of like that. Okay. And they have, I think it's like some kind of specialized filter where it can collect the particles. So you just suck them up that way, and then he's stuck on a screen. Well, if he's literally a gas, my vision for this is that you just like build up a fake bank and build an airtight bank vault with fake money inside and just like seal him in there. And then he's are, done. Are bank vaults not airtight? I would assume not. I yeah. mean, you don't want mildew and like That's true. weird stuff enough. getting you need. Nobody's going to again. In, nobody's designing bank vaults to be impassable to gaseous people. I want to see like the standard security for like in a superhero universe, because they got to be it, it, everybody. Talk, everybody now and then talks about the insurance that you have to have for like superhero fights, right? Like there's that one. I think it's a Geico commercial that has that, or State Farm or something. But like banks, because you have people like Poison Ivy who can grow, or like Mister Freeze who can freeze it. Do you spill build like specialized ba- security for your bank? Well, apparently not, because those guys are still criminals in those universes. Yeah, and get into stuff. And Batman still has to keep punching them and what whatnot. That's why Batman hates people because no one's figured this out yet. Ah, uh, guys. Add a thermostat to your bank. You can know when Mr. Freeze is there. Well, I think that is going to do it for this week of Two Weird Didn't Watch. Um, the future of the show is, uh, well, hopefully we're going to keep going, but there's uh, possibly going to be some production issues. So mm-hmm. uh, we will keep you abreast of that. We missed not last week unless something happened. But the, the last week as we're recording this, a couple weeks ago, we skipped a, uh, skipped a week. Um, because of uh, some stuff, we didn't have any episodes in the can. So we are going to continue to keep bringing this to you. But if you like it, subscribe and you will get the new episodes when they come out and leave us a review on iTunes. Those really help. Thanks so much, guys. Bye, guys.